Hello and welcome to a new series covering the Node MCU, a module which is based on and utilises the ESP8266. This series covers everything you need to know to develop for and work with this amazing little module. Before we jump into how to use this device, let's go over some details about it. When the ESP8266 first hit the market, they were advertised and adopted by the community as a simple way to add Wi-Fi functionality to your existing microcontroller project, such as the Arduino Uno. However, it didn't take long for people to realise that the processor on board could be utilised on its own and on most occasions replace the need for another microcontroller completely. Although, in the beginning, there were a few problems with this. Unlike the Arduino, where nearly all the pins were exposed to headers on the board, such as the GPIO, SPI, I2C, the analog to digital converters, the digital to analog converters, the original ESP8266 only exposed a total of 8 pins, which consisted of two GPIO, a SPI interface used to program the device, and the standard VCC and ground lines required to power it. These limitations resulted in a number of revised boards being produced, such as the ESP02, which kept the same amount of pins available but enabled an external antenna to be added for Wi-Fi, the ESP03, which exposed a total of 7 GPIO pins and an SPI interface, however still left out that vital ADC functionality, although it did have a ceramic antenna. There were numerous other revisions made all the way from the ESP4 up to the ESP12. Let's take a closer look at the board this series is going to be working with, the ESP12. And let me explain why I feel this is my most favourite child of the ESP8266 family. The ESP12 is a surface mount system on module, meaning all the important bits such as the crystal, the Wi-Fi antenna, the bypass caps are all on the module's PCB and you just solder it down to your project to give you access to the microcontroller's pins. Speaking of pins, the ESP12 offers a total of 16, which consists of 8 GPIO, an SPI, ADC, and the required VCC and ground to power it. The metal can on top protects the module from interference, and the whole module is FCC certified, meaning one little less thing to worry about should your project be released commercially. Now up to now, all I've been speaking about is the ESP modules. I haven't really explained what the Node MCU is and why we're using it instead of the ESP12 by itself. Well, we kind of are. The Node MCU is an ESP12, but on a parent board with an additional voltage regulator and in-circuit serial programming chip. These two additional components make it easy to power the module via USB and program without the need of a separate serial programmer. Now I've shown you around the hardware, let's talk about how the device is programmed. The company behind the ESP8266 have released a software development kit that allows you to develop firmware for the device in the C programming language. However, the fact the SDK is quite low level and the compiler is a bit of a pain to set up, I prefer a different method. Let me introduce you to my new friend, Lua. Lua is a scripting language that's been around since 1993. It's primarily been used within the video game industry, however a number of very clever people managed to port the Lua interpreter and runtime to the ESP8266. This means that instead of having to develop our firmware in the low level C code, we can now develop our application in the Lua programming language and save them to the ESP8266 to be run. In the next episode we'll be looking at setting up the Node MCU, downloading and installing all the necessary tools required to write the firmware on the device and develop a quick and simple bit of firmware to test that everything is working. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it informative. As always don't forget to subscribe to be kept up to date when I release more videos in this series. Until the next time, happy hacking and I'll catch you later.